you're listening to my friend Gory Anderson on My Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Well, I had a piece of equipment that wouldn't uh, turn on when I hit the button. What can I say? Well, in the news today, is the economy slowing down? Well, I don't know. Car sales are down for the last three weeks. The stock market has been losing for the last three weeks. And Harley today, their uh, stocks are plummeting more. Lack of sales. A lot of things are going on. Now, one of them is the tariffs. I've been talking about it for the last three weeks. You put the tariffs on, that is going to really put a monkey wrench into the economy. Not so much right now in 2018, but starting, well, the first part of 2019, you're going to start seeing uh, companies not hiring as much. You're going to maybe see some companies laying off because, you know, for them to export their goods to China, it's, I mean, especially with the economy of China right now, we're hurting them and they're hurting us. And it's really crazy. And then we have our president talking to, well, saying to the Fed chairman that they shouldn't be raising the interest rates up. That is crazy. And he's taking a personal approach to the Fed chairman about the Fed, uh, you know, raising the interest rates. Well, you can't blame just the feds. No, they shouldn't at this time be raising uh, the interest rates right now, not with the tariffs. That's like a one two blow. So, you know, what is it going to do? Well, well, it's going to cost you more money to go out and buy that car. And that's why maybe Harley sales are down and and car sales are all of a sudden in the last three weeks. It's coincidental. It all happened when they started putting the tariffs on and the Fed started talking about raising the interest rates, which they did. I don't know. I think it's it's really going to be interesting. And then on Saturday, the president of the United States, without even the uh, Congress, the Republicans in the Congress didn't even know he was going to announce this, started talking about a tax cut, 10 percent tax cut for middle class. They didn't even know anything about it. And, you know, if that happens, that's not going to happen this year. It's not going to happen soon. So, you know, what it is, it's a little bit of talk, a little bit of jive just before, you know, the uh, mid-elections. I don't know. It's really interesting what is going on with the economy and all that. And then... And then we have the weather. What's happening off of uh, Mexico? Well, we have another hurricane. And these hurricanes seem to be getting more and more of them and and stronger. Well, anyway, right after uh, this next little um, promo for the show, we have Debbie Anderson. She's a medium, and we're going to be talking to Debbie. So right after this. Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Well, hi, Debbie. How's everything going? Absolutely fantastic, Gary. Okay, and how long have you been a medium, out of curiosity? And why don't you tell everybody where you're originally from? I think I hear a, a British accent or something. It certainly is. At least you didn't say Australian. A lot of people say, oh, you're from Australia. And I'm going, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I am originally from Britain. I'm now a Canadian uh, uh, import, I suppose, from there. I, I live in Canada now in southern Ontario. And my journey started, I'm 61. So it started when I was about four years of age. Oh, wow. And that time, uh, my parents were going through a separation, which then turned into a divorce. And my twin brothers and I were sort of bundled off to my grandparents' house with my mom to stay there while things, I suppose, were cooling down. And uh, I shared a bed with my mom. And of course, in those days, children actually went to bed uh, about 6.30 in the evening. And they went to bed without electronics. And so there I am laying in bed and uh, all of a sudden the uh, the ceiling started to peel back in my interpretation of it. And all these ethereal bodies were starting to come down and sit on the end of my grandmother's bed that uh, I was sleeping in. And of course, it scared the bejeebas out of me. So I screamed as children do. Mum ran up and you know, oh, you must be having a nightmare. And of course, this went on for a little while. So I think spirit were going, 
okay, we're not actually helping this kid. She's scared out of her uh, wits here. So maybe we should just back off a little bit. And, of course, it wasn't until many years later that I recalled that and I realized, okay, that was my first encounter with spirit. So not the best one that I can remember. Uh, as I went on sort of in life, I was getting uh, sort of, I suppose, a, you would call it me a, a precocious child. I would say things to people that obviously they didn't like to hear and they were usually coming from spirit. And, uh, you know, so that sort of went on to my teenage years when uh, at that point my mom actually took me to see a psychiatrist. And in those days, in the 1960s, they had, uh, especially in England, uh, places where they would put you into a room in a white jacket, which wasn't very uh, <laughs> flattering for your body. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you mean and, where uh, you, they, they, they had you tied? You were locked away, basically. So, so for me, I got a little bit scared and then said to, uh, you know, the psychiatrist, oh, I was making it all up. I was just being a, you know, a teenager that was being disruptive and got into a lot of uh, trouble over that. And I was realizing that in my life at that time spirit wasn't actually helping me it felt like they were hindering me but i you know in those days especially people didn't understand as much as they do today it wasn't an open conversation and things like that so uh, we are pretty well i suppose educated in this kind of thing and my mum didn't understand either and she was a single mum just trying to bring up three kids and get on with her life kind of thing so she didn't need all this kind of thing going on so uh it wasn't until I think in my early 20s that I truly started to realize that I was having this connection with someone. You know, in my teenage years, I, I remember sort of seeing what I deemed as being Jesus Christ and nobody else on the, uh, the bus with me actually saw anything. So, you know, this is why I ended up at the psychiatrist. But... Uh, you know, in my 20s, I was, you know, doing readings for people. And I've been doing them for many, many years using tarot cards. And I saw this course come up that could give me the opportunity to learn how to read the tarot cards properly. So I took it. And during that course, it was when I met a couple of other people that do the same kind of work as I do. So I realized I wasn't alone. But I also realized at that point that what I was being taught, I couldn't learn, but I was giving messages to people based on what spirit were giving me, which were correct. You know, people say, well, what you're telling me is correct, although the uh, instructor was saying, I don't know how you're getting this information. It's certainly you're not reading the tarot cards properly. Well, cut a long story short, I then met up with the people that uh, I, I met through that course one particular lady who is still a very, very close friend of mine to this day. And uh, we started to get other people together. And, of course, again, we were in the days without Internet and things like that. So we would read a book or go on a workshop or a course or something like that to learn about something and then share it with each other. Then I got the opportunity to go to the Arthur Findlay College of Metaphysics, as it's now called, in Essex, which is quite a famous uh, place which is a bit like the Hogwarts in Harry Potter and uh, in those days it was they just taught mediumship and healing and it was during that course that I was there that I realized I was actually home and there were other more people like myself and our friends that were developing and learning and uh, getting connections with spirits so it you know nowadays there's so much uh, exposure to the kind of work I do, which is fantastic. We've got people like John Edwards and the Long Island Medium and uh, James Van Praa and all these wonderful people that are uh, visually there so that people can understand that this is not quite as freaky as people assume it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people are more open to it, so it's great. Now, you mentioned how old were you when you started uh, getting these uh, spirits coming to you? Well, I was four years of age when I first had my encounters, but as I say, at that point, I didn't have anybody there to sort of say, oh, it's okay, you're seeing spirit. You know, so, uh, as I shared, most uh, parents or uh, caregivers or grandparents or aunts and uncles now sort of know about this kind of thing, so they're less likely to 
dismiss the child and say, oh, you're, you're just seeing your imaginary friend or something like that. It was a case of, you know, parents are more understanding today than they were then because they're more knowledgeable. So nothing against my mom or the people that were around me at that time. They just didn't understand it. And uh, so for me, it was a case of I could have these conversations with uh, what now I understand to be spirit. But again, I had these imaginary friends and I was getting this information through. So it, it was really different than it is today. Well, you know, you're not the only one, you know, that uh, a medium that's been on the show that said the same thing. You know, I'm 66 years old, so we're very close to, you know, the age group. And I've had a couple other mediums, uh, you know, in our age group say the same thing when they were young and they started getting the gift. The very first thing they did, the parents freaked out and and, yeah. and, and took their uh, child either to the hospital Hey, you know, and, and the same thing, you get a, a this little nice vest, you know, yeah. they kind of like tie your arms down where you can't move your arms yeah. and they put you in this well, yeah. like rubber room. And I've heard it. I heard it from a couple of different mediums because they didn't understand. And then what they would tell me is that like the psychiatrist would say, well, no, it's just your imagination. You, you, you know, it, oh boy, you know, I, I tell you, things oh, have really come a long ways I mean, Thankfully, we're, we're more, I suppose, open and receptive, which is great. It actually wasn't until many, many years later after I'd been doing this uh, for some time that my, my mother actually said something that, you know, gelled with me. She said, well, you know, your grandmother used to do tea leaf readings for people. <laughs> like, you could have told me that. But, <laughs> but she that... just dismissed it, you know. But People that's different. Is. That's different, Debbie. I mean, tea leaves are different. I mean, you know, I <laughs> I find that so funny because I heard that even before, you know, like, hey, you, you know, uh, my mother or my grandmother used to, you know, read people's palms. But then then yeah. then if the child all of a sudden started having spirits uh, contacting yeah. them or seeing yeah. somebody's future or, you know, seeing somebody's you know, uh, uh, a lost relative coming to them or something, right. th then they, they that's different. Well, what is it yeah. any different from reading somebody's palm or reading tea leaves than somebody getting, you know, messages from the spirits, good or bad spirits? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I conclude that the messages I got when I was reading the tarot cards, whether my grandmother was reading tea leaves, were divine messages from spirits. So, you know, and I know to some religions it, it's classed as evil and that kind of thing. But, you know, I I can't dismiss the information I get and when I share it with people. There's no way I know, you know, their grandmother or their father or anything like that. So, you know, people say, well, can you be reading somebody's mind? Well, I suppose I could if I knew how to. <laughs> but, you know, I've even had people that have gone away and had to find that information out and then have come back graciously and said to me, you know, I said that, you know, I, I didn't know this. In fact, uh, last year, the year before I was on tour and uh, I was saying to this lady, uh, it, it was actually an evening of clairvoyance. I was doing platform mediumship. So it was to a large group and the... Uh, I was sharing from an aunt that was in spirit that, you know, this lady was going to Italy. And she said, yes, I am. So I said, well, you know, you're going to Venice. And she said, no, 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 we're not going to Venice. Definitely not going to Venice. And I said, well, your aunt here is saying you're going to Venice. And of course, it became rather comical. So, you know, at that point, I said to the lady, well, just hold that thought because she is quite emphatic that you're going to Venice. Well, she came the next day and she was having a reading with my counterpart that was also working with me. And she said,